So guys what if God like Naruto x Amaterasu x Kashina Harem special movie. Sitting high above the village of Konoha, on top of the stone head of the fourth Hokage. Is a young boy that appeared to be 16 years old, the boy stood at 510 with tan skin. Waist length spiky white hair, deep violet eyes, and a vertical line in the middle of his forehead. For clothes he wears black shinobi sandals, black cargo pants, a tight white kimono top with baggy sleeves that had tomo around the cuffs and on the collar, and around his waist was his Konoha headband acting as a belt. This boy's name is Naruto Uzumaki or at least that's the name he uses, his real name Naruto Otsutsuki, the demonic god, husband of Kagaya Otsutsuki, father of the Biju, the sage of six paths, and many other children that will be named later. Naruto is supposedly the son of Minato Namikaze and Kashina Uzumaki but the truth is he's a being as old as time itself. Flashback Naruto is actually the ten-tailed beast and he has roamed these lands from before humans popped up. For a long time Naruto ruled the lands like a god and all was well. Then humans showed up and for a while they worshipped him but then they began to fear his power and thus feared him. Some brave idiots tried to claim his power for their own only to end up being erased from existence. After a while of this Naruto warned the humans to leave him be or he would erase them all. The humans did as he asked and left him alone, but then they started warring with each other. Naruto didn't want any part of their wars so he just traveled the land looking for a nice place to rest, it was during his travels that Naruto came across Kagaya, who just so happened to be an alien princess, it wasn't too long before the two fell in love and Naruto willingly shared his power with her, Naruto then took a human form and married Kagaya as she became the mother of Chakra while he was the father and later they had two sons who inherited their Chakra. As the two boys grew Kagaya gave them love and nourishment while Naruto gave them discipline and trained them in the control of their Chakra. The only problem in their lives was Kagaya's want to bring peace to the lands. Naruto already knew that Kagaya could bring peace but it wouldn't last as the humans seemed to always find ways to fight over the smallest and stupidest things, Naruto allowed Kagaya to do as she pleased with his full support since he was a good husband and just like he thought Kagaya brought peace, though also like he thought Kagaya's peace didn't last as just like with him the people began to fear Kagaya and sought to dethrone her. Naruto of course didn't take the attacks on his wife well and because of this he returned to his true form. A huge white ten-tailed wolf with forward-facing horns, think Ichigo's horns when he goes full hollow, and his tails actually being hydra heads, and destroyed the armies that the humans sent to attack his wife, Naruto's return only sparked more fear into the people as they wondered what they had done to make the creature angry, Naruto revealed that Kagaya was his wife and that he would destroy all who threatened her. Hearing this only made Kagaya's love for Naruto grow as she knew he preferred to leave humans to do their own thing while he lived in peace with his family, the only reason Naruto would deal with humans was if they interrupted his peace, Kagaya's love grew so much that she bore Naruto nine more children. While her first two sons took after her more than Naruto, these nine new ones took after Naruto's true form, Naruto's sons on the other hand, Hagoromo and Hamura, thought that their parents were power crazy and felt that they knew of a way for things to be better. Naruto's cave Hagoromo and Hamura walked into their father's cave with the intentions of confronting him on his and their mother's actions. While they loved their parents dearly, they were becoming tyrants and the twins felt that it was time for all of the bloodshed to stop. They soon came across their father in his true form resting in the middle of the large cave, no matter how many times they saw their father's true form they just couldn't believe the sheer size and power that radiated from their father. When they got close to their father his eyes shot open and they stared into cold grayish purple eyes with six rings around a slit pupils. So, my children have finally come to seal me, said Naruto much to their surprise. How did you know father? Asked Hagoromo, because I raised you two brats. I know how you think, said Naruto before he slowly stood up. It was amazing to Naruto that he was able to find a cave to fit his great stature. Naruto turned from his two children and walked further into the cave. This had confused his children as they followed him but once they reached the back of the cave they were shocked beyond belief. Laying in the semicircle were nine curled up creatures of different species sleeping, Hagoromo and Hamura noticed that they all had a different number of tails going from one to nine. Farther, what are they? Asked Hamura, they are a part of me, said Naruto as he looked at his sleeping children. Naruto knew full well that they weren't really sleeping because since when did children go to sleep when their parents told them to? Most likely they were up and playing together before they heard him walking towards them and decided to act like they were sleeping. 
Hagoromo narrowed his eyes at the biju as he took his father's words the wrong way, he believed that his father had made them from his power and was going to use them as another defense for his mother, they look like children, maybe they can be put on a better path, Hagoromo thought to himself. Hamura's eyes widened at this as he knew what their father meant as he had often told them that they were a part of him, Hamura instantly knew that these nine creatures were his and Hagoromo's younger siblings. If you are truly going to seal me away then go ahead. I won't stop you, said Naruto, greatly confusing his children. Noticing their confusion Naruto continued, I taught the two of you many things over the years. I've taught you to be strong in both mind and body, to never judge another until you know them. To control the power that you inherited from your mother and I, and most importantly I taught you the value of family, I must say that I am disappointed that of all the lessons it's the last one that you choose to forsake, but I am also proud that you are showing your determination to follow your own path and not the path others have chosen for you, said Naruto but Hagoromo and Hamura noticed that he hadn't looked at them as he said it. Why are you taking this so well father? asked Hagoromo. Because despite the fact you plan to seal your mother and myself away you two are my sons and I love you so I can't bear the thought of killing you. Sure in my human form I'd be able to disable you without fatal injury but in my true form even the smallest fraction of my power would be enough to kill you, plus every child gets to the age where they think they know better than their parents, it just took you too longer than I thought it would, said Naruto with amusement clear in his voice at the end. Humans have changed from what you once knew father, said Hagoromo. Ha 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 ha, my son I have watched these humans since the day they crawled out of their caves and started to roam my lands. I've known of them before they knew of themselves and while they might have changed some since their birth their very nature has not changed, they are greedy yet fearful creatures that wish to control what they don't understand and what they don't understand and can't control they fear and try to destroy. I have found few that are not like this and have even called them my friend. When they died I watched over their children and then their children and so on and so on, do you know what I learned from this? asked Naruto. What did you learn father? asked an interested Hamura. I learned that bonds can last forever as long as the feeling of friendship and love are shared between both parties, I also learned that humans are a jealous race as those I didn't not consider my friends sought to harm those I did, said Naruto. You played favorites father, what did you expect? asked Hagoromo. I expected them to respect their god, roared Naruto as he finally turned to face his first two sons. Naruto knew his nine little ones were trying their hardest to appear to still be sleeping but he also knew they were paying close attention to what he was saying. What he was saying would be a lesson for his children, I ruled them as their god and they praised me for my generosity and kindness, they would come to me with a problem and I would either solve it for them or tell them to do it themselves, they came to fear my power and sought to bring me to their feet, to make me into their pet, I killed them for this but only the ones that came to attack me, said Naruto. Maybe if you just proved to them Hagoromo tried to argue before he was cut off. Foolish child. No god needs to prove themselves, any being trying to prove themselves a god is either crazy or lying, said Naruto before taking a breath to calm down. Look you two I can admit that my rule wasn't perfect, I didn't love every damn human I came across and preferred that they leave me in peace, I was too detached while your mother loves them too much, said Naruto. Too much, she's killing them by the hundreds, argued Hagoromo. Your mother loves the humans so much that she is willing to kill hundreds to save thousands, she will force humans to stop their wars by killing the ones that don't stop fighting and you should be glad for this because I had to talk her out of putting the whole damn world into an eternal illusion, said Naruto. She was going to what? Asked Hamura. Father why don't you help us? Asked Hagoromo but Naruto seemed to ignore his question. Boys, I was too soft in my rule and your mother is too harsh. Maybe you'll find the right balance between how I do things and how your mother does thing, go ahead and do the sealing but be ready to accept the consequences of your actions, the world is yours now my children do with it as you please, said Naruto though only Hamura saw that Naruto was talking to the biju while Hagoromo thought Naruto was talking to them. A few minutes later Hagoromo and Hamura had finished sealing Naruto and were walking out of the cave as they decided to leave the biju for later. This isn't right Hagoromo, said Hamura. What are you talking about Hamura? asked Hagoromo. This doesn't feel anything like you said it would. You said that father would fight us so that he wouldn't be sealed. You said he would try to convince us to join him and mother, and you said he would berate us and disown us as his children. Father did nothing that you said he would and now I feel great sadness inside of me after betraying my father, 
The man that loved us unconditionally for years and taught us everything we know while allowing us to form or own opinions on things rather than forcing us to think like him. I feel hollow inside Hagoromo, said Hamura. I feel the same Hamura. Father did not act at all how I believed he would, but we've come too far to turn back now, said Hagoromo. Hamura knew this to be true and so he continued to follow his brother, but in the back of his mind he couldn't help but wonder what their younger siblings would think of them after this, he and Hagoromo were taking away their father and mother after all. Back in the cave what the brothers didn't know was that as soon as they left the area Naruto unsealed himself and stood before his still pretending children, my foolish sons, you really believed you had the power to seal me, chakra comes from me, it is an extension of my power and you are not strong enough to harm me with it. Naruto said to himself, All right you lot stop pretending to be asleep and talk with your father, said Naruto as the biju finally stopped pretending. What do you want us to do father? Asked the small orange nine-tailed fox, he was the oldest of his siblings and therefore the de facto leader. I want you all to live your lives, what you do from this point on is completely up to you but no matter what you decide your mother and I will always love you, said Naruto. Why are you talking as if well never see you again? Asked the fox. The others looked at their father nervously as they felt really scared at losing their father. Because Karama, it will be a long time before you see me or your mother again, your older siblings believe in their ideals so much that they are willing to seal their parents away. I will not stand in their way so once they seal your mother I will remove her from it and we will go to the realm of the gods and watch the world from there. Here Naruto paused and saw the sad expressions on his children's faces, do not feel sad my children. Just for you once I free your mother well return here and spend as much time as we can with you before your brothers no doubt return. Also before we leave I will set up a mental link between us so that you may talk to me or your mother anytime you wish, said Naruto. He then smiled as much as a large wolf could because he saw that this made them at least a little bit happier. Very well father, said Karama, good, now come children it is time for you to sleep. And I am staying this time to make sure you sleep said Naruto as he narrowed his eyes at his sheepish-looking children at the end. He then used his tails to pick them up and lay them in the center of the cave as he wrapped himself around them, not a second after closing his eyes did he open them again thanks to feeling something pawing at his nose, in front of his nose he saw a small ball of blue and black fire in the shape of a cat with two tails, a small white dolphin horse with five tails, and a small white slug with six tails all looking at him. Matabi, Kakuo, and Seiken. Didn't I just say that it is time for you to sleep, said Naruto. I know daddy but I just want to get this out before bedtime. Daddy will you mate with me when I am older? Asked Matabi, she was then suddenly pushed aside by her older sister Kakuo who glared at her. Matabi how dare ask such a question of father, have you no shame? Beside it is obvious that as his most proper daughter father will be courting me once I am of age, said Kakuo. Oh please Kakuo. You're not proper you just have a stick shoved so far up your ass that you can't relax, said Matabi. How dare you, said Kakuo as the two of them started to butt heads, while they were fighting Seiken took this as her chance to move closer to her father and started to rub her body against Naruto's nose. Ah papa, I would find it most enjoyable, if maybe, you would consider, mating with me when I am older, but only if that's okay with you, said Seiken in her soft and shy voice. Naruto couldn't help but grin at three of his four daughters, he didn't know how the three of them developed a father complex, but he didn't mind and neither did Kagaya as she expected him to have multiple mates, plus since he was a god they didn't to worry any problems that might come from incest, though Naruto did sigh at the fact that his children were only five yet they acted like teenagers. Enough you three, we'll talk about this some other time but for now it's time to sleep, said Naruto, Seiken nodded and climbed on top of his nose and went to sleep. Matabi and Kakuo stopped fighting and did as their father said with Matabi climbing onto the top of his head and Kakuo climbed onto his back, their brother and oldest sister were sleeping curled up in his tails. It took a whole week before Naruto felt that his wife was sealed away and quickly went and unsealed her. Without Hagoromo and Hamura knowing, and brought her back to the cave to spend time with their children. For three weeks Naruto and Kagaya stayed with their children and showered them with love before they felt Hagoromo approaching the cave. Like Naruto had told them he set up a mental link between them so that they could talk whenever they wanted to. Naruto also told Kurama that since he was the oldest that he was in charge of his siblings and that it was his job to take care of them until he returned, with that out of the way Kagaya and Naruto said goodbye to their children and left for the realm of the gods. 
Over the millennia Naruto watched as his son Hagoromo gave humans chakra while Hamura watched over Kagaya's empty prison. Naruto became pissed though when Hagoromo sealed the biju into himself and tried to teach them his way of doing things while claiming to be their father. The biju didn't like this either but they played along so that Hagoromo wouldn't try to seal them away permanently like he tried with their parents. For millennia the parents watched as humans began to abuse the power they were given, as their children were hunted like wild animals, used as weapons in wars, and finally they watched as humans rewrote history in their own way, they said that Naruto was a tree that bore fruit and made Kagaya into a power-mad human that only gained her power from eating his forbidden fruit, that last part usually made Naruto giggle a bit as he remembered that many times he had tasted her forbidden fruit. Later though Naruto finally decided to return to the world with Kagaya but Naruto decided to be reborn so to speak by injecting himself into Kashina Uzumaki while she was pregnant. Because of that she had triplets instead of twins, and though Naruto was technically a baby he could still change his physical self to be any age he wanted. Before this though Naruto had quite a good time in the realm of the gods as he had become the mate of the goddesses Kami. Yami, Jashin, and Amaterasu and had children with each of them, not to mention he would temporarily return to the human world from time to time in order to feel nature of his lands around him once again and there were one or two human women that caught his attention that he mated with and while doing this he found that there were still people loyal to him and his wife so he gave them a way to stay connected to them. Flashback and so much has happened since my time in this world. So much has changed and yet so much has stayed the same. Naruto thought to himself, he stood up when he felt a presence behind him and turned to find his first wife Kagaya standing there. She looked just as beautiful as always with her pale skin. Pale pupilless eyes, small eyebrows, a vertical slit in the middle of her forehead just like his. Long flowing white hair that actually dragged along the ground. Supple lips covered in red lipstick, and brown horns that stuck up from the top of her head and looked like rabbit ears, for clothes she wore a high collared heim kimono with tomo running down the center and edges of the gown and it was also adorned with intricate gold and purple lines. Her kimono hid her body completely but Naruto knew that under it was an hourglass figure with GG cup breasts a flat stomach, wide hips, thick thighs, long legs, and a fat round ass. Hello my dear husband, how are you this night? asked Kagaya. I am fine my dear, our daughter and I graduated from the academy today, though it wasn't really that hard, said Naruto. Please dear, from what you've told me that academy prepares you for nothing besides those stupid D-rank missions we've heard about, and speaking of our daughter, they wish to speak with us tonight, in person, said Kagaya. Very well. Have them meet us at the house and it'll be there shortly, there is a little problem that needs to be taken care of, said Naruto, Kagaya nodded and gave him a quick kiss before disappearing into a portal she created, Naruto then took off in a burst of speed into the forest just outside of Konoha's walls. In the forest we see a man with white hair in the standard Konoha Chunin uniform and two Fuma shuriken on his back jumping from tree to tree with a large scroll in his hands. This Chunin's name is Mizuki and he just stole the forbidden scroll of seals from the Hokage Tower, he was trying to reach the border when he had to stop when he found someone in front of him. Hey Mizuki sensei, what are you doing out here? asked Naruto. Mizuki glared at Naruto as not many people in the village liked Naruto or his sister and mother, Mito and Kashina. You see when Kashina gave birth some crazy bastard came and ripped the Kyubi out of her and forced to attack the village. Minato was able to split the Cubist chakra from its soul and body and seal it into his firstborn son Menma while sealing the body and soul into Mito using the Reaper Death Seal Jutsu against Kashina's wishes. Minato expected the Shinigami to take his soul after that but the god didn't and simple told that a worse fate awaited him for what he had done. After that Minato told the village what he had done but left out the man that had attacked and escaped as he didn't want them to panic about it. This caused the people to see Menma as a hero but they saw Mito as a monster resulting in them treating Menma like a prince while they tried to treat Mito like trash. Tried being the key word because Naruto and Kashina wouldn't let them thus causing them to be hated right along with Mito. Kashina told Minato what was happening but he didn't believe her as he felt the villagers wouldn't do something like that, this caused Kashina to leave Minato while taking Mito and Naruto with her, she tried to take Menma too but he sided with Minato. Kashina had a deep belief in family overall but Minato showed her that he would put the village over his family, anyway back to right now. What are you doing out here Naruto? Asked an angry Mizuki, it was bad enough he was forced to pass the demon lover and his demon sister but now he was standing in the way of his escape. 
I asked my question first, said Naruto with a straight face. If you must know I am on my way to a mission, said Mizuki coming up with a quick lie. Okay traitor I don't have time for this, said Naruto as he disappeared in a burst of speed and reappeared in front of Mizuki with his fist embedded in Mizuki's stomach. Mizuki threw up everything he had eaten during the day and fell to his knees, he could feel that some of his internal organs had ruptured as he struggled to breath. That should keep you still until Anbu get here to take you in and if they hurry you may actually live through this night, said Naruto. It only took a couple of minutes before Anbu showed up and Naruto explained what had happened. All but one were skeptical that a new genin would be able to stop a chunin but they remembered who his mother was and her reputation. They took the forbidden scroll and Mizuki and left. But one cat masked Anbu stayed behind. They just stared at each other for a few moments before held his arms out to her with a small smile on his face. The cat-masked Anbu quickly ran into Naruto's arms and hugged him tightly as Naruto returned the hug. Papa, whispered the Anbu, hello my darling daughter, want you remove that mask and show Papa your face? Asked Naruto, the Anbu moved back and took off her mask showing a beautiful face with soft fair skin, brown eyes, and long purple hair. This is Yugo Otsutsuki or Yugo Izuki as her cover name, Anbu captain of Konoha, and the daughter of Naruto Otsutsuki and Yami. How are you doing dear, is that Hayate boy treating you well? Asked Naruto concerned for his daughter. While he had many daughters and few sons Naruto treated all of his children well as they were all special to him, whether they were minor gods like Yugo here or demigods like his children in Suna didn't matter to him, they were all precious gifts given to him by his mates. I am fine papa and yes Hayate is treating me well, you don't need to worry so much about me, I am a grown woman said Yugo though it did make her feel warm on the inside that her papa cared so much about her. To these humans you may be a grown woman, but to someone as old as me you'll always be that little girl in the purple sundress begging papa to teach her about swords or to buy her a sword, said Naruto with a smile. Yugo smiled as she remembered her younger days when she spent so much time with her family before she was allowed to venture out on her own and choose her own path in life. Sure since she was an Anbu captain she was loyal to her village but her loyalties to her father, mothers, and siblings were much more important to her. Ha ha ha. Did you just call yourself an old man papa? Asked Yugo with a laugh. An old man I may be, but I am the youngest looking old man you'll ever meet now don't you have work to do? Said Naruto though his eyebrow did twitch at the fact he called himself old. Oh right. I better go before they come back. I'll see you later papa said Yugo as she hugged her father one more time. Before you go, make sure you contact your mother, she may the goddess of hell but she still worries about you and your siblings, said Naruto. I will, bye papa, said Yugo as she disappeared into the trees, Naruto smiled after his daughter before he disappeared in a burst of speed and reappeared in the middle of the forbidden area of the forest of death. A couple of yards in front of him was a massive tree with a large treehouse built into its branches. Walking up the tree until he reached the front of the house. Naruto opened the door and found Kagaya drinking tea with two young girls. The first seemed to be the same age as Naruto's body with fair skin, pale lavender eyes, and long dark blue hair. The second seemed to be a few years younger with fair skin, pale white eyes, and long brown hair. These girls were Hanata and Hanabi Otsutsuki or Hayuga as their cover names, daughters of Naruto and Kagaya Otsutsuki. Their births were very complicated and will be explained later. Hi father, daddy, said Hanada and Hanabi respectively. Hello my sweet angels, your mother said you wish to speak to me, said Naruto as he sat down beside Kagaya. Yee yes father, but wwwe really just wa wanted to g get out of Hyuga com compound, said Hanada. Hanada was a huge daddy's girl, while she didn't have a father complex like some of her sisters she did become nervous for her father's approval when he was around, even though she knew she always had his approval. When he wasn't around she acted much like Kagaya, well a kinder version of Kagaya to the branch Hyuga. Yeah. Plus that dick Hiyashi was being a real pain in the ass again, said Hanabi. Hanabi was a daddy's girl just like Hanada with the difference being that she became cheerful and outspoken when he was around rather than shy and timid. She also tended to act like Kagaya most of the time. Oh and get this, he tried to marry her off to some 40-year-old rich noble from grass country, said Hanabi. This information made both Kagaya and Naruto stiffen and started to release an oppressive aura, now they didn't mind if their children wanted to get married but they would be damned if anyone forced them to. And now Hanabi, I it wa wasn't that bad, Hanada said softly. Wasn't that bad, he tried to grope you, yelled Hanabi. He did what? 
yelled Naruto and Kagaya at the same time, let it be known that nothing was as terrifying as Naruto and Kagaya in protective father, mother mode. At that moment all around the world protective parents everywhere felt the parental rage flowing off of Naruto and Kagaya, as one they all smiled wickedly, scaring whoever they were around at the time, before praying for damnation upon the one who was foolish enough to harm the child of a protective parent, they all for some reason felt that their prayers would be answered, oh how right they were. I I I, I street stopped him be before he see could, said Hinata. This only slightly calmed her parents, some human had tried to touch their daughter against her will. Oh there was going to be great consequences for this. Kagaya, inform Yami of the situation and make sure to inform her to take extra special care of this one, said Naruto in a deadly calm voice. Kagaya simply nodded before she disappeared into a portal. Hanada and Hanabi shivered at the mention of Yami, while they loved their mother Yami and she was always kind and loving to them, they also knew that she could be a sadistic monster to those she was charged with torturing. In grass country we find a noble grumbling to himself with all of the bones in his right arm shattered from where Hanada hit him. That stupid bitch, she should have been honored that I wanted to touch her large breasts, I know, ill have her breasts cut off and hanged on my wall as a warning for any other bitch that thinks they can defy me, the noble said to himself. Suddenly his escort stopped, wondering what the hold up was he peeked and saw that every man that was escorting him was dead, Standing in the middle of the road was a beautiful woman with pale skin, bright red eyes, long obsidian black hair, an hourglass figure, long legs, wide hips, a firm ass, and large G-cup breasts, she wore a very revealing black thigh-length silk kimono and no type of footwear, this is the goddess Yami and she is not happy. So you're the fool who thought he could disrespect my daughter and get away with it, well have to fix that, said Yami with a sadistic smirk. The noble blinked and she was gone which freaked him out, he blinked again and now she was holding him up by his neck, let's go back to my place, I have lots of games we can play, said Yami as they began to sink into a flaming pit, she eased her grip enough for the noble to let out one last scream before the only ones that would hear him scream would be the damned souls of hell. Aaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
said Hinata but before she could walk through her portal she was hugged by her father. Good night Hinata. I'll see you tomorrow in class but please try not to stutter so much, there is no need to be so nervous around me, I'll always love you no matter what you do, said Naruto as he kissed her forehead, Hinata blushed a deep red but nodded before she walked into her portal. You know, for being such a daddy's girl I am surprised she didn't develop a father complex like some of your other daughters, said Kagaya. I am actually surprised too, but whatever makes her happy, said Naruto. Naruto is currently sitting in the academy waiting for Aruka sensei to show up and divide them into teams. Naruto appeared to be calm as he sat in his seat but on the inside he was trying his hardest not to explode. The reasons for this being that one, he hated the academy since they taught nonsense most of the time and didn't really focus on things that could help them be ninjas. Two, the noise the fangirls were making as they fawned over Sasuke Uchiha and Menma Namikaze, and three, Kiba Inazuka kept hitting on his daughter Hinata when she clearly had no interest in him, no one seemed to notice the rabbit she had sitting on her desk in front of her, if it wasn't for the fact that Kiba's mother Sum was nice to Mito and his sister Hana was friends with Yugao he would have neutered Kiba by now, he still might. Looking at Kiba Naruto couldn't help but shake his head. The kid had great potential to be a taijutsu master and a great tracker along with his dog partner Akamaru. But he was too obsessed with proving that he was an alpha male and mating with who he felt was an alpha female a. K. A. Hanada. Naruto didn't want Kiba anywhere near Hanada for the simple fact that Kiba was a horn dog. He knew Kiba had already slept with a couple of civilian girls that he only considered stepping stones to bedding Hanada. Naruto would kill Kiba and the entire human race, only saving those he liked, before he let that happen. The Inazuka clan as a whole was actually in trouble because of Kiba's actions. It was a bad idea to sleep with a girl and then dump them after you were done in the first place. It was even worse when you're the clan heir as your actions reflect on the clan. Because of Kiba's actions a lot of male Inazuka clan members were finding it hard to get dates or just to get women outside the clan to talk to them. Which was bad since the Inazuka clan was one of the few clans that believed in marrying outside of the clan in order to bring in new blood. Also teams with Inazuka males were given less missions that involved being around women, which were a lot, the Inazuka females were unaffected by this since Sum set an example of what Inazuka females were like, which meant if you messed with one in the wrong way you were up shit creek without a paddle. Naruto often wondered why Sum didn't just make Hana clan heir but he later found out that the heir would be the oldest male child the clan head had if they had more than one child. While Soom could make Hana the clan heiress she knew it would greatly hurt Kiba if he lost his title and she wasn't willing to hurt her own son like that, Naruto knew that Soom only had three options. She could a make Hana the heiress, b whip Kiba into shape so he stops starting fires of trouble faster than she could put them out, or c allow Kiba to continue as he is and drag the clan's name down with him. Turning his sights from Kiba, Naruto looked at Sasuke and couldn't help but frown deeply at him. In Naruto's opinion Sasuke was the definition of a spoiled child, Sasuke used to be a pretty nice child before his brother Itachi killed everyone in the clan expect Sasuke, their mother Makoto, and the children, Makoto survived because she was out visiting Kashina that night and the children survived because of Naruto hiding them with a genjutsu that even the Sharingan couldn't break. Ever since that night Sasuke has been a little brooding prick that was obsessed with killing Itachi. He seemed to completely ignore that he still had his loving mother and the other Uchiha children around, hell his mother had even offered to train him since she was a rather powerful kunoichi before she retired, but he refused and decided to train on his own, it also didn't help that most of the civilian council kissed the ground Sasuke walked on, making him think he was Kami's gift to the world and he was owed everything he wanted. Then came Menma, an arrogant child that just knew he had the power and skill to back it up, being trained by both Minato and Jiraiya, plus looking like a younger version of Minato, has given Menma an ego that was as large as Sasuke's, even though Menma chose to stay with Minato he at least still respected Kashina for her kunoichi skills, he also didn't bother much with Naruto and Mito, he was civil with them some of the time but other than that you could barely tell they were related. Speaking of Mito, Naruto turned to his right and looked at his younger twin. Mito looked like a younger Kashina with violet eyes. Fair skin, long red hair kept in a ponytail, an athletic but feminine build. Large D-cup breasts, a slim waist, a large bubble butt. And long legs, for clothes she wore black high-heel sandals. 
Black knee-length tights, and a tight long-sleeved top and showed off her midriff. Her Konoha headband was tied around her forehead and around her neck was dark violet prayer beads with a silver medallion that had the image of a rabbit on one side and a wolf on the other. The symbol of her religion, she was currently bored out of her mind. Naruto couldn't help but smirk in amusement at that, Mito never did like being still for long periods of time. Mito and Kashina were actually the only beings besides his mates and children that knew who he was. Mostly, he told them that he was a god and that he was married to multiple women. Naruto told them when his body turned 14 and he got mixed reactions. Kashina was deeply shocked that her child wasn't technically her child but was in fact the god that the whole Uzumaki clan had worshipped. In the end she told him she didn't care and he was still her baby boy and just because he was her god didn't mean she would let him do whatever he wanted. Naruto had laughed at that but couldn't help but feel touched at her declaration. Being a god that was around before everything Naruto never knew what it was like to have a mother. He decided to let her continue to be his mother as he liked the feeling of having one. Mito on the other hand was crushed that he wasn't her brother. She greatly admired him and wanted to be just like him. That changed though when Naruto told her that he would still see her as a little sister since just like not having a mother he didn't really have any siblings either. Midas' feelings changed over time though and while she still treated Naruto as her brother she had also grown a crush on him. Naruto knew of her feelings of course but decided not to say anything, head wait until she decided to tell him herself. A few more minutes passed and Aruka finally came into the classroom though he annoyed the fuck out of Naruto when he started a long and boring speech about how he was proud of them and how this was the start of their ninja life. Sasuke got rookie of the year and Sakura Haruno got kunoichi of the year. Naruto could have easily got Sasuke's title but simply didn't want it. Hell he could rule the world right now but he decided to do things slowly rather than instantly. Alright for teams we have team 1 with said Aruka. Naruto decided to tune out Aruka since he could tell that teams 1 to 6 would be teams that wouldn't have anyone of interest on them. He did pay attention though when Aruka got to team 7. Team 7, by order of Hokage-sama, will be Sasuke Uchiha, Sakura Haruno, and Menma Namikaze, your sensei will be Kakashi Hitaki, team 8 will be Shino Aburame, Kiba Inazuka, and Hinata Hayuga, your sensei will be Kurenai Yuhi. Team 9 is still in circulation from last year. Team 10 will be Ino Yamanaka, Choji Akamichi, and Shikamaru Nara. Your sensei will assume a Serutobi. And finally, the first ever three-man cell. Team 11 will be Naruto Uzumaki and Mito Uzumaki. Your sensei will be Anko Mitarashi, said Aruka. The reactions to the teams were very different for each team. For Team 7 Sasuke just continued to brood. Menma was glad that he got a strong sensei but irritated as he knew Kakashi was going to be late. And Sakura was off in fantasy land with thoughts of being double teamed by both Sasuke and Menma. Seeing Sakura's nosebleed Naruto couldn't help but shake his head. He saw a great deal of potential in Sakura but she wasted it fawning over the reincarnations of his grandsons Indra and Asura. Yeah he knew about Indra and Asura reincarnating and he was greatly disappointed in them. He felt that after they died the first time that they would learn to work together instead of fighting against each other, but of course they just continued to fight, now that he was here though he would make sure they stopped fighting. For Team 8 Shino showed no emotion about his teammates. Hanada showed a neutral face but was fuming on the inside about being on the same team as Kiba. And Kiba was extra happy about being on the same team as Hinata plus someone he knew wouldn't be any competition for him for Hinata's feelings. Naruto was of course unhappy with the fact that his daughter would have to be around Kiba until she either became a chunin or he killed Kiba. He put his money on him killing Kiba first. Not that he didn't believe in his daughter's skills, he just really didn't like Kiba being anywhere near his daughter. For Team 10 Ino was fine with her teammates since they were friends for their whole lives but was upset at not being on a team with Sasuke or Menma, Shikamaru seemed to not care, and Choji just kept eating his chips. For Team 11 Mito couldn't be happier since she was on a team with her brother as this meant she could get much stronger by learning from him as well as their sensei while continuing to learn from their mom. Naruto was also happy with his team as he greatly enjoyed his sister's company and she was a hard worker. It only took about an hour for the senseis to come and pick up their students though Kakashi wasn't with them. Before any of them could call for their team something broke through the window and landed in front of the class. It turned out to be a woman with lightly tanned skin, purple hair done in a spiky fan ponytail, pupil-less brown eyes, a slim but athletic build, 
large D-cup breasts, and firm ass. For clothes she wore a mesh bodysuit with nothing underneath, an orange mini skirt, silver shin guards, black sandals, a snake fang necklace, her headband around her forehead, and an open tan trench coat. Behind the woman was a banner that said the sexy and single Anko Sama. All right brats if still don't understand from the banner then I am the sexy and single Anko Sama and I am here for my team, so team 11 stand up. Said Anko. At that Naruto and Mito stood up and Anko got a good look at them before nodding her head, hey Nai Chan you mind if I do introductions with you since I only have two genin? Asked Anko. Not at all Anko. Team 8 you're with me, said Kuranai. Kuranai was a rather beautiful woman with fair skin. Long untamed black hair that reached her upper back. Unique red eyes that had an additional ring in them, a slim build, and D-cup breasts with only a little bit of makeup consisting of purple eyeshadow and red lipstick. For clothes she wore a red mesh armor blouse with only the right sleeve visible. Over that is a broad material that resembles bandages with a pattern that looks like rose thorns. Her hands and upper thighs are wrapped in bandages, her headband in on her forehead, and she wears regular sandals. With that Team 8 and Team 11 went with Kurenai and Anko to Kurenai's favorite tea house, though they had a little trouble getting service since Naruto and Mito was there but a small amount of killing intent from Naruto fixed that, mostly because a small amount to Naruto was a life-threatening amount to a normal person and while Kurenai and Anko felt him do it they didn't say anything since they felt he was in the right. All right brats let's get down to business and do introductions, Nai-chan and I will go first to show you how it's done, said Anko. Naruto sweat dropped at the fact that they believed that they didn't know how to introduce themselves but let it go as just a human thing. Though Mito sweat dropped to when she noticed this and the fact that Kiba nodded along with it, I'll go first, my name is Anko Midarashi. I like Dango, snakes, my friends, training, and torturing people. My dislikes are traitors, rapists, those who take my Dango, fangirls, and my former sensei. My hobbies include torturing people at TNI, eating Dango, hanging out with my friends, leaving men with blue balls, and drinking sake, my dream for the future is to kill my former sensei, said Anko with a sadistic smirk, Naruto briefly wondered if Jashin had a child she didn't tell him about but threw that thought away as his mates told him everything. My name is Kuranai Yuhi, I like my friends, tea, roses, and genjutsu, my dislikes are perverts, rapists, fangirls, people who look down on serious kunoichi, and a certain book series, my hobbies include hanging out with my friends, reading my favorite book series Ninja of My Heart and Punishing Perverts, my dreams for the future are to show the world that genjutsu is an art that shouldn't be looked down on, meet the author of my favorite book series, see my team become successful in their ninja career, and to have a family, said Kuranai. All right with us out of the way well start with my team since I only have two, you go first snow top, said Anko. Fine. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, I like my family. My friends, nature, ramen, dumplings, training, and writing books, my dislikes are rapists, child abusers, war, people who disturb my peace, and people who disrespect my family and try to harm my sister. My hobbies include relaxing in nature, writing my books series, training, hanging out with my friends and family, and I've been known to play music every now and then. My dreams for the future are to live in peace with a large family, said Naruto. Wait what book series do you write? Asked Anko. I am actually the writer of Ninja of My Heart so I guess one of Kuranai Sensei's dreams came true. I am actually surprised you didn't recognize my name Kuranai Sensei since my name is on the back of each book. Said Naruto. Naruto had started writing Ninja of My Heart after he heard Jiraiya bragging about his own book. He had taken a look at Jiraiya's book and found that it was nothing but smut. Sure the story was good but it was still smut, so Naruto decided to write his own book and right now it was doing much better than Make Out Paradise. The reason being that Naruto made it so that you actually cared about the characters in their story, there was sex in the story but instead of mindless fucking it was intense, passionate lovemaking, in Naruto's opinion a good sex scene didn't just give you a nosebleed but also a boner that lasted even after the scene was over. It also helped that you didn't put sex in every chapter that way it had built up. Kuranai quickly took out her copy of his third book and looked on the back and saw that his name was in the bottom right corner of the book. Kuranai's eyes sparkled at finally meeting her favorite author but decided to hold back her excitement until after introductions were done, then she could ask the questions she always wanted to ask, although she didn't show it, 
Anko was excited too since she also loved the book, she didn't say so earlier because she always teased Kuranai for always being in the book, needless to say she was extremely happy to be teaching her favorite author. Well anyway let's continue with introductions, you're up red, said Anko. My name is Mito Uzumaki, I like my family, my friends, ramen, training, and reading, my dislikes are perverts, rapists, and any villager that can't get past their hatred, my hobbies include hanging out with my brother and mother, training, reading, and learning about the Uzumaki, my dream is to become a great kunoichi and marry the man of my dreams, said Mito. Very good you two now it's my team's turn why don't you start us off Hanada, said Kuranai. Hanada glanced over to her father with a blush on her cheeks. Naruto simply nodded to her with an encouraging smile. Seeing this Hanada took a deep breath to calm herself down and reminded herself that she always had her father's approval no matter what. My name is Hanada, Hayuga, said Hanada though she hated saying Hayuga as she really wanted to say her real name. I like my family, my friends, flower pressing, cinnamon buns. And foo foo cuddly poops, said Hanada as she held up her bunny. I dislike the caged bird seal of the Hyuga clan, the Hyuga elders, perverts, rapists, people who make fun of my eyes, and boys that won't leave me alone, said Hanada as she looked right at Kiba when she said the last part, no one seemed to notice Naruto stiffen when she said people made fun of her eyes, he didn't know anyone made fun of her eyes, who made fun of her eyes, he would turn them inside out and then make fun of their insides. My hobbies include flower pressing, reading, training, spending time with my little sister, playing with foo foo cuddly poops, and spending time with my family. My dreams for the future is to become a strong kunoichi and to find a boy my father will approve of, said Hanada. Very good Hanada, your next Kiba, said Kuranai while trying not to cuddle foo foo cuddly poops, he just looked so adorable. Yahoo! I am Kiba Inazuka and this is my partner Akamaru. I like dogs, my clan, girls and women, girls being 13 to 17, women being 18 plus, and Hanada Chan. I dislike animal abusers, Sasuke, Menma, Naruto, and anyone who flirts with Hanada Chan. My hobbies include training, playing with Akamaru, and doing other activities. My dreams for the future are to become a great clan head and to marry Hanada Chan, said Kiba. Naruto was slightly shaking in rage as it took everything in his power to not kill Kiba right then and there, Kuranai was shaking too as she just realized that she had a pervert on her team, sure just about everyone knew about Kiba sleeping around but the fact that he called it one of his hobbies really pissed her off. I am not marrying you Kiba, said Hanada in cold and stern voice that reminded Naruto so much of her mother, on the outside Hanada appeared calm, cool and collected but on the inside she was a raging inferno of anger that she was desperately trying to keep contained, that stupid mutt, how dare he say something like that out loud and in front of my father no less, I have never been so embarrassed in my life, Hanada raged in her mind. Moving on, it's your turn Shino, said Kuranai, my name is Shino Abarame, I like bugs, my clan, and tea, I dislike those who kill bugs for no reason, insect repellent, and those that mistreat my clan. My hobbies include reading, studying bugs, and learning more about my clan. My dream for the future is to be a good clan head, said Shino. Well now that that's out of the way I can tell you that you all are not officially genin as the academy was just to see who was good enough to take the real genin test, though Naruto and Mido since there are only two of you and your siblings I am not even going to bother with the test, said Anko. Aw man. Well in that case you wanna go out Hina Kiba never got to finish as he was kicked in the face by Fu Fu Cuddly Poops and sent crashing into the street outside the tea shop. This surprised everyone except Naruto and Hanada. Naruto wasn't surprised because the rabbit was born specifically to keep idiots like Kiba away from his daughter and Hanada wasn't surprised because she saw the rabbit do the same thing to Hiyashi this morning when he saw the bunny and tried to take it away. Anyway, Team 8 meet at training ground 8 at 7A, M Sharp, dismissed said Kuranai after getting out of her shock and before she and Anko disappeared, with that the group split up and went home with only Mito and Naruto going in the same direction, while walking home Naruto decided it was time he talked to his son face to face and that it was time that he and Mito started to work together. Uzumaki house since they no longer lived in the Namikaze mansion, the Uzumakis now lived in a nice two-story house with three bedrooms, two bathrooms, a game room, and a pool in the backyard, Walking into the house Mito and Naruto saw their mother sitting on the couch reading a book while wearing her normal attire. Hey kids, how was your day? Asked Kashina with a motherly smile on her face. It was fine mom, Naruto and I are on the same team, 
said Mito as she sat on her mother's right side. We also don't have to take the secret test since our sensei could tell that Mito and I wouldn't have any problems working together, said Naruto as he sat on the left. Well that's good to hear I didn't spend all that time training you two together for them to separate you two, said Kashina, Naruto nodded at this and while he didn't need training he did enjoy learning new things, plus it would be suspicious if a completely untrained child could suddenly crush villages by just unleashing his chakra. Mom. I think it's time Mito talked with the Kyubi, said Naruto though he disliked using his son's title rather than his actual name, he thought it would be worth it to see the look on Kashina's and Maida's face when they learned that the Biju were his children. What? Why? asked Kashina terrified at the idea of her daughter being anywhere near the Kyubi. Because having Mito and the Kyubi working together rather than against each other and it will also make it so Mito doesn't use the Kyubi's chakra while she angry and can't control herself. Said Naruto, seeing that Kashina wasn't convinced he sweetened the deal, if you'd like you can come along with me and Mito into her mindscape, said Naruto. Kashina took a deep breath before nodding her head in agreement. Mito didn't say anything because she trusted Naruto knew what he was doing, she knew Kashina believed in Naruto too but as a mother it was in her nature to worry about her children. Good. Now then Mito I need you to lift your shirt and show me the seal. Mom I need you to make a reinforced shadow clone to watch over us and to explain things should anyone come and check up on us, said Naruto, Mito blushed but lifted her up so it was just under her breasts and started to channel chakra so that her seal showed. Kashina created a reinforced shadow clone. Naruto sat cross-legged in front of Mito and placed his hand on her seal while Kashina sat behind him and placed her hand on his shoulder, he closed his eyes and channeled his chakra. Midas Mindscape When Naruto opened his eyes he, Mito and Kashina were in Midas Mindscape. Midas Mindscape took the form of a large forest with lush green grass. A few mountains in the distance, a large lake, and dark clouds in the gray sky. Naruto knew that the clouds and sky showed Midas negative feelings towards the village since despite Naruto's and Kashina's best efforts Mito still did get affected by the villagers' treatment of her. Walking deeper into Midas Mindscape they soon came across giant cage doors with a paper seal sitting in the middle. Suddenly a large red eye with a black slit pupil opened up in the darkness behind the gate and glared at them. So my jailer has finally decided to visit me, and would look at this she's also brought my former jailer and her brother, to what I owe the displeasure of having you in my presence. Asked Karama with rage clear in his voice, then the cage lit up and showed him in all his glory. Oh my, you really have grown haven't you my son, Naruto thought to himself though he did notice that Karama didn't seem to recognize him, most likely because he looked so young. Look Kyubi, the only reason I am here at all is because my brother had the idea that it would be better if we worked together rather than against each other, said Mito. And why should I care what your stupid brother thinks, he's just some worthless human with a name he doesn't deserve, said Karama with a growl, he really didn't like that some human had the same name as his father. Now you listen here B Mito didn't finish because Naruto placed his hand on shoulder to stop her from finishing. My you sure have grown over the years, it's good to see you again. Karama, said Naruto with a small smile, Kashina and Mito didn't understand what Naruto was talking about but Karama was shocked and enraged. How do you know that name? yelled Karama, isn't it obvious Karama, I know your name because, Naruto's body started glow before he completely changed into his true form, which still towered over Karama, I am the one that named you, said Naruto, Kashina and Mito stared in awe as they finally saw their son, brother, God in his true form. F father shouted Karama in surprise, hello my son, before we continue this talk let's get rid of this seal as I don't like seeing you caged, said Naruto before he swiped one of his tails at the gate and completely destroyed it, stay put Karama, said Naruto as he noticed Karama getting ready to leap at Mito and Kashina, Karama immediately sat still and didn't dare to move, he still remembered the punishments he and his siblings used to get when they disobeyed their mother and father. Father what is going on? asked Karama, W we would like to know that as well Naruto-kun, said Kashina in a nervous voice. It's simply Karama, I am here to visit my son and release him from his prison, I also felt you would work well with Mito here, said Naruto, also Kashina, Mito, this is my son Karama, Naruto explained to the two. You have a son, shouted Kashina in surprise, not just a son but I have many children, why are you so surprised, I told you and Mito that I was a god and that I was married to multiple women, did you really think I went all these centuries without having children? asked Naruto, Kashina just rubbed the back of her head sheepishly. Wait, 
If the Kayubi is your son does that mean that the rest of the Biju are your children as well? Asked Mito. That is correct. They are all my precious children with Kura-chan here being the oldest of the nine, said Naruto. Father, I am too old for you to call me that, yelled Kurama. If it wasn't for his fur already being a dark color everyone would be able to see that his face was a bright red. No you're not. Just because you're bigger doesn't mean you're not still my little Kura-chan, said Naruto. Father, whined Kurama while Kashina and Mito were silently laughing at him. Wait, brother do you have any human-looking children? asked Mito. I do, in fact most of them are either the same age as you or older with only a few being younger, said Naruto. Really, who are they and how is that possible? asked Kashina forgetting that this is a god she is talking about, nothing is impossible. I am a god mom, I can be in multiple places at once so while you were changing my diaper an older version of me was out taking care of my children. It's an ability I used often when I was a baby since I didn't want to worry you with your newborn suddenly disappearing on you for long periods of time. I am also all-knowing but I don't use that power often since I like surprises, I let Kami be the all-knowing one in the relationship, said Naruto smirking at Kashina's sheepish face, she should have known it was something like that, as for who they are well I guess I can tell you the ones here in Konoha, you already know Kura-chan here, there is also your former student Yugo-chan, then there is Hanada-chan, and my youngest right now is Hanabi-chan, said Naruto. Mito was shocked that she'd been going to school and was friends with her brother's daughter all this time and didn't know it. Though thinking about it now it all made sense, Hanada was a very nice and sweet girl but when you angered her she was like a force of nature that wouldn't be stopped until she wanted to stop. She was drop-dead gorgeous with a body that most grown women would kill their own mother to have, not to mention she carried herself like she was divine royalty. Mito at first thought it was because she was a Hyuga but now it made sense, Hanada Hyuga was the daughter of a god so she was divine royalty, hell everything about her screamed that she was divine now that Mito thought about it, even her voice which was soft and gentle carried a shit ton of raw power behind it. Kashina on the other hand looked like her brain just exploded, Kurama she could understand even Yugo since not many knew anything about her family, most believed that her parents were ninja that died in war but Kashina knew Hanada's and Hanabi's mother personally, hell she was there when both girls were born so how was Naruto the father? Wait, wait, wait. How is that possible? I was there for when those two were born and I know Hitomi didn't cheat on Hiyashi so unless you god beamed your sperm into her how are you the father? Asked a frantic Kashina, this actually got Naruto to chuckle as he actually could do something like but chose not to, it felt way better to make babies the old fashioned way. Well I guess I could tell you, do you wish to hear the story as well Kurama? Asked Naruto before asking his son the question. Actually yes, you may have told me of my little sisters, but you never actually explained how they came to be, I at first thought you had just adopted them into the family until now, said Kurama. And you accepted them like they were blood related anyway and for that I am proud of you Kurama, said Naruto with a smile that Kurama returned, if I am going to tell this story I better go get your mother so she can see you again and make sure I don't leave anything important out said Naruto before disappeared from the mindscape. Once Naruto was gone an awkward silence overtook the ones that were left, desperate to break the silence and stop the awkwardness Kashina decided to ask a question. So since you're Naruto's son does that make me your grandma? asked Kashina. No, just because my father accepts you as his mother does not mean you have any relation to me or the rest of my siblings, said Kurama with a sneer. What's with the attitude, can't we just get along? asked Kashina. I think you're forgetting that for years you had me chained to a moon with stakes going through my tails, joints, and stomach, as far as I am concerned you have a lot to make up for before we can get along, you are nothing like Mito, said Kurama. What do you mean she's nothing like me? asked Mito. Not you child, I meant the woman you're named after, Mito Uzumaki Senju was actually a good friend of mine when I was sealed in her, I was free to move around as I pleased, I could see and hear through her senses, and she would talk to me almost every day. It saddened me when she died but at least she said goodbye, when I was transferred to your mother I knew she wouldn't be the same as Mito but hoped to have at least a good relationship with her, instead I got treated like a feral animal that needed to be restrained and ignored unless she needed my chakra for some reason, said Kurama. Kashina wanted to say something to this but she couldn't, she had done everything that Kurama said she did and now she was panicking a bit since she treated the son of her god in such a shameful way. The only plus side she saw was that she could at least make up for her past actions. What about me? How do you feel about me? Asked Mito. 
Neutral as of right now. Sure you may have caged me and ignored me but that's just because you didn't know you could talk to me. Though don't think I didn't catch that beast comment you would have made if father hadn't stopped you, said Kurama with narrowed eyes as Mito sheepishly rubbed the back of her head. At that point Naruto returned with Kagaya sitting on his head. Kashina and Mito were in awe of Kagaya's beauty and the power that radiated from her. Mito noticed the similarities between Kagaya and Hanada, not just in the eyes but also in how they carried themselves. After Naruto laid down on his belly Kagaya stepped down from his head and walked up to Kurama. Kurama shrunk down in size until he was about an inch shorter than Kagaya and with that done Kagaya hugged Kurama around his neck and Kurama nuzzled into his mother. I missed you my son, said Kagaya in a loving motherly. I missed you to mother, said Kurama before he pulled back from the hug. My little Kura-chan has grown so much over the years, said Kagaya with a smile. Mother please not you too, whined Kurama. Oh hush, as your parents were allowed to call you cute pet names, now your father tells me he's about to tell you how Hanada and Hanabi were born so everyone get comfortable as it's a rather long and complicated story, said Kagaya. When that everyone got comfortable with Kurama laying on his stomach while Kashina and Mito sat next to each other, Naruto changed into his human adult form, which made Mito and Kashina blush at how handsome he looked, before sitting against a tree with Kagaya sitting on his lap and snuggling into his arms. You know before Hanada was born I was surprised Kagayaheim here even wanted more kids after having Kura-chan and the others, said Naruto with Kurama still grumbling about being called Kura-chan. It's not like I didn't want more children I just didn't want to have nine children at the same time again, you have no idea how hard and painful it is to push out nine kids, especially nine biju-sized kids, said Kagaya. Kashina paled at this, sure she loved all of her children. Even Menma and would gladly give birth to them again if given the but even she had to admit that the process was horrible. She only had to do it three times but Kagaya had to do it nine times. Kashina couldn't imagine the levels of dedication and love it would take for her to push out six more kids, hell after she had Menma she had cursed out the doctor for telling her that Naruto was coming and after that she had to have another doctor come help her because she punched out the first one for telling her that Mito was coming. There was no telling how much of the hospital staff she would have gone through if she had to push out six more children. Right sorry dear, anyway one night Kagaya and I were just relaxing in our little house but she looked so beautiful to me and I just had to have her, so after a rather intense make-out session we ripped off each other's clothes off, I bent her over the table, and shoved my, said Naruto before Kurama interrupted. Father I think you can skip this part, yelled Kurama in horror at the images assaulting his mind. It was bad enough when his mother and father had given him and his sibling the talk. He didn't need the image of them doing it in his mind. Kashina and Mito were both blushing bright red from the images they were drawing up with Mito even having a little nosebleed. Kagaya however smiled as she remembered that night with her husband. It was a night full of passion and love that made her toes curl, her throat sore from screaming, and her stomach full, not to mention she wasn't able to walk the next day. Fine. Fine ill skip the juicy part anyway after that night, said Naruto. Hitomi Hyuga, a member of the branch family of the Hyuga clan. She was a very kind woman as she treated everyone equally and could always be seen with a soft smile on her face, she was also a very beautiful woman with long midnight blue hair, soft white skin, an hourglass figure, wide hips, long legs, DD cup breasts, and a thick ass. Hitomi's beauty and kindness were a few of the reasons why she was the most loved member of the branch family another reason was because she was a splendid ninja, one of the best the branch family had to offer. Despite this her life was terrible, she had been forcibly married to her clan head Hiyashi Hayuga. Hiyashi was a very old man that barely talked to her if it wasn't necessary and treated her more like his personal maid rather than his wife. Recently he's been talking about how it was her duty to produce an heir for him and had bedded her every night for the last month with no positive results. This was something she was actually happy about as she could tell with the way he treated her that he would be a terrible father, though he was starting to bed her more frequently. These days he tended to get mad at her when she told him that she still wasn't pregnant, as if it was her fault. The smile she was once known for always having had become a rare sight due to just how unhappy she was. Hitomi was currently sitting in the Hyuga garden among all the flowers while looking at a medallion in her hands, the medallion was silver with the image of a rabbit on one side and a wolf on the other and hung from dark violet prayer beads, her friend Kashina had given it to her when she noticed just how unhappy she was and told her to hold in her hands while praying and she would receive help. Story pause we will have a long talk about you giving out our medallions Kashina, 
though you did it for the right reasons our medallions are only meant for the faithful. Next time simply pray to us yourself and we will do what we can, said Kagaya. Kashina looked down like a child being scolded by their mother after being caught eating cookies before dinner, it was worse because when she was little Mito told her not to give the medallion to others or it could anger their gods. Story Restart Hitomi knew that this medallion belonged to Kashina's religion but she didn't put too much stock in the idea of getting help from Kashina's god. Now though she was pretty much out of options as she could tell that not only was Hiyashi becoming angry with her but so were the elders and it probably wouldn't be long before they arranged for her to have an accident and just married Hiyashi to someone else. Having no other options other than to take a chance she clenched the medallion in her hands and began to pray. Please, if you're listening I need help. The man that is supposed to love me doesn't and I fear for my life should I not fall pregnant soon. If I do fall pregnant I fear for the well-being of the child as well for my husband as a cold and uncaring man. He is but a puppet that the elders use to do as they wish, prayed Hitomi. She then felt the medallion become warm in her hands and saw it start to glow before everything around her seemed to slow down before coming to a complete stop. The birds had stopped in mid-flight. The fish in the koi pond next to her had stopped swimming and even the gentle breeze she was enjoying had stopped. The Hayuga, it has been some time since I've spoken with the Hayuga, said Naruto as he appeared behind Hitomi in his adult human form. Hitomi quickly turned around at the sound of his voice and couldn't help the light dusting of pink that came to her cheeks. Hey, are you Kashina's god? Asked Hitomi. Yes I am, of the two gods of the Uzumaki clan it is the wolf that stands before you while the rabbit rests. Now tell me everything and leave nothing out, said Naruto. With that Hitomi began to tell Naruto everything that had happened to and around her while Naruto closed his eyes and listened. Once she finished Naruto did not like anything he heard. Truly you humans can be the most disgusting of beings at times, to think that the descendants of my wife and I would enslave their own family members, said Naruto. Um, lord, Hitomi trailed off for his name, Naruto, said Naruto knowing that Hitomi would most likely believe that Kashina simply named one of her sons after her god. Lord Naruto. What do you mean by your descendants? Asked Hitomi while believing that Kashina named one of her sons after her god. It is like I said, the Hyuga clan is directly descended from my wife and I, in fact the Hyuga clan, Uchiha clan, Senju clan, Uzumaki clan, and the Kagaya clan are all direct descendants of my wife and I, but you did not call me here for a history lesson. The situation with your clan is far more dire than you understand, said Naruto. How so Lord Naruto? Asked Hitomi, the branch family have figured out that they outnumber the main family and were planning an uprising since even with the caged bird seal they believed they could overtake the main family. The elders also figured this out and because of this they married you, the most loved branch Hyuga, to the clan head, they've given the branch family a false belief that now that one of their own is in such a high position that they have a chance to be free of their slavery, said Naruto. But the elders won't allow that, said Hitomi in a sad voice. Correct. They simply married you to Hiyashi in order to placate the branch family. Most likely they expected you to be pregnant by now so that you could give birth to an heir that would most likely inherit your natural skill before they killed you off and made a show of having Hiyashi mourn you to trick the branch family into believing he actually cared, said Naruto. But he wouldn't really care. ITD be just a show to keep the branch family in line and the thought of rebellion far from their minds. What would happen to the child if their plan succeeded Lord Naruto? asked Hitomi with a bit of fear in her voice at what the fate of the child would be. If you would have birth a son the elders would have most likely groomed him to be just like Hiyashi only he would be worse. Not only would he do the same thing to some young woman that Hiyashi is doing to you, but since the boy was born of a branch Hyuga the branch family would trust him and in return he would take even more of their freedoms, if you had birth a girl they would have most likely destroyed her self-esteem until she simply did anything that was asked of her without question then married her off to some noble that promised them either money or political power, said Naruto. Hitomi clenched her fists that this information as she didn't want either of those to happen, is there a way you can help me? asked Hitomi. Not just you but the entire clan, but I need to speak with my wife first so give me a moment, said Naruto. Hitomi nodded at this and watched as he closed his eyes and she guessed had a mental conversation with his wife. She sat there waiting for about half an hour before he opened his eyes. Hitomi-san, would you like a nanny job? Asked Naruto. Um, I guess, said Hitomi a little confused by the question. Just then Kagaya appeared in a flash of light while standing next to Naruto. Hitomi was taken back by Kagaya's beauty and could only guess that this was the wife Naruto was talking about. So this is the woman you wish to help? 
asked Kagaya. Yes dear, this is Hitomi Hayuga, said Naruto. Kagaya started at Hitomi for a while before speaking. Very well, you will be sleeping on the couch for a month after this beloved, said Kagaya. Story pause I did not like that couch, said Naruto. Well you should nt have taken the birth of our daughter away from me. Be lucky I still allowed you in bed for sex, said Kagaya. I don't want to hear this, yelled Kurama yeah but you'd kick me out as soon as we were done. I don't know why though as you love it when I said Naruto before he was interrupted. Will you shut up and finish the story, yelled Kurama really not wanting to hear more. Fine, but I don't know why you're complaining. That move I do is how you and others got here, said Naruto. Father, yelled Kuama. Meanwhile Kashina and Mito were blushing at the information they were receiving while Kagaya had a slight nosebleed as she thought about that move, she really loved that move. Alright, alright, damn stop yelling, anyway, said Naruto. Story restart yes dear, Hitomi my wife here, Kagaya, is pregnant with our next daughter, in order to help you and this clan I will transfer our daughter into you so that as she gets older she will reshape the Hyuga clan into something to be proud of. You will act as her nanny when either Kagaya or myself aren't taking care of her, she is not to be harmed while in your care and you are to be the one to teach her the gentle fist, said Naruto. Hitomi was greatly shocked at Naruto's plan and could now understand why he would be sleeping on the couch, his wife clearly wanted to give birth to their child and this plan took that away from her, but apparently Kagaya could understand that this would save the clan. Why you wish for me to g give birth to a goddess, said Hitomi. Yes. With the will of both myself and my husband behind her your elders and Hiyashi will not be able to influence her and with the power shell carry shell be able to fix the Hyuga clan, said Kagaya. With that said and done Naruto placed his hands on Kagaya's and Hitomi's stomachs and transferred the baby to Hitomi, we will be watching over you to make sure nothing happens to you or the baby, said Naruto. Years later Hitomi was sitting in the Hyuga garden watching a three-year-old Hanada playing in the flowers. If you asked Hitomi if it was worth giving birth to a daughter that wasn't her own she would tell you yes every time. Hitomi found Hanada to be an absolute joy to be around. In fact as of right now Hanada and her friends outside of the clan were her only joys. When she informed Hiyashi that she was finally pregnant he reacted in the way that she expected. He simply told her that it was about time, he then made her stop visiting the branch family because in his own words now that you are carrying the next clan head you can't be wasting time amongst the servants she couldn't believe he had said that to her face. This had the effect of making the branch family believe that she had forgotten where she came from and became just another uptight main family member, with the main family still seeing her as only a branch member and the branch family only seeing her as a main member she was hated by both sides of her family. Naruto and Kagaya came by plenty of times just to speak with her as they knew of her situation with her family they had actually become good friends of hers. It always makes her smile to think that she is a friend to two gods. When Hinata was born Hitomi quickly figured out that a baby goddess was way different from a baby human. Since Hinata couldn't be trained yet Hiyashi left Hinata with her a lot of the time while he dealt with clan matters. The elders had already started their plan to kill her as they poisoned her tea and food but thanks to Naruto and Kagaya she was immune to the poison. Naruto and Kagaya came by pretty much every day to spend time with Hanada. It was clear to Hitomi that even at only a few weeks old Hanada knew who her parents were and that was fine with her as she and Hanada developed a sisterly bond. As Hanada grew Hitomi noticed that when around herself or her parents she smiled more, laughed, and all around acted like a normal happy child but when Hiyashi or any other Hyuga was around she became quiet and very serious, much like her mother, what no one other than her, Naruto, and Kagaya knew was that because she was a goddess Hanada developed faster than any normal child. At three months old Hanada could walk on her own without trouble and could talk in full sentences, at a year old she had a vocabulary that was better than most adults and understood more about the world than some of the world's greatest thinkers, and at two years old she understood politics and where babies came from, she had even asked her parents for a sibling. Because of this she was once again pregnant with another of Naruto's and Kagaya's children. She didn't mind though as they were her gods now as she had officially joined their faith. Hiyashi didn't really care that she was pregnant again and the elders were mad because they expected her to be dead by now, she did worry though because at two years old Hanada was kidnapped by Akumo Janin and she believed she'd be in trouble for that but Naruto assured her that it was fine as apparently Hanada hadn't even woken up during the whole ordeal, it made her sweat drop that Hanada was such a heavy sleeper. Suddenly everything started to slow to a stop and she felt the medallion she had hidden under her kimono start to become warm, she knew this meant that her gods were coming 
and just like she thought Naruto and Kagaya appeared in front of her in a flash of light. Father, mother, squealed Hinata as she ran over and hugged both of her parents who returned the hug. Hello Hinata-chan, how are you doing? asked Naruto. I am very well father, said Hinata, are you behaving for Hitomi? asked Kagaya. Yes mother, said Hinata, and how are you Hitomi? asked Naruto. I am fine Naruto, are you and Kagaya here on pleasure or business? asked Hitomi. A bit of both, we wanted to see Hinata-chan while also checking on you and the baby but we also want to discuss what to do concerning the elders' plans, said Naruto. They've grown tired of waiting for the poison to kill you and have decided to kill you as soon as the baby is born, we will not allow this to happen, as you have become a dear friend to us, said Kagaya. I won't let them hurt my big sister or my little sister so ill destroy them, said Hanada as she activated her by a Kugan. No Hanada, you need to remain a simple child for now, let your father and I handle this, said Kagaya though she did have a small smile on her face at her daughter's protectiveness. Hanada deactivated her by a Kugan and nodded to her mother with a pout on her face, this just made Kagaya hug Hanada close as she loved when her daughter acted cute like that. With that Naruto and Kagaya discussed their plan with Hitomi before spending some time just talking as friends and playing with Hanada before they left. Months later just minutes after Hanabi was born Naruto appeared and replaced Hitomi with a lifeless copy he made. After taking Hitomi away and disappearing one of the Hyuga elders came into the room and injected a very deadly toxin into what he believed to be a sleeping Hitomi. The next day the elders told everyone that she had died due to the stress of childbirth, never knowing the truth of the divine intervention that had occurred. Thanks for watching.